Okay, so damping, right? We want to extract energy. Oh, we probably shouldn't say extract. That sounds like we have the energy left. We want to remove energy from the system. Great. So this stops our system from oscillating indefinitely. So what that looks like on the plots that we've been making is before, well, maybe not quite like that. Before we had a system that looked like this, and now we're going to have a system that looks like that. Um, so we need a mathematical model to do this. And for that, we're going to use the dash pot. Right, and so we draw our dash pots uh, just like this. And this is our, 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 our linear model to extract energy from a system, right? So let's say we have a, a force positive in this direction. Um, we are going to need a force that acts into this dash pot, right? So we're going to call that FC. Just like before we had FK for stiffness, we're going to call that FC. So just as a spring is our physical model, um, is our physical linear model, our dash pot is going to be our, our ideal linear model of a damper system. So everything has damping, and we'll talk about that a little bit more. But don't think about damping just in things that have dash pots, right? So if I if I hit this pedestal, um, you know you can watch those vibrations, you know, uh, peter out over about a second, right? So the, so the pedestal itself has damping, and we would model that with a dash pot. So let's do let's dive into that a little bit more. So is damping? This is a little harder to to imagine. Right? But if you have a damper in your hand, what is the best way to compress the damper all the way while expending the least amount of energy? What's the best way to do that? Let's say you're really weak and you want to compress a damper. How do you do that? Yeah, so we're going to, we're going to push them together, right? But uh, the damper kind of already justifies that. So how do you make it easier to push in? Yeah. Yeah, you do it slowly, right? So all of a sudden now we can derive that our force, Fc, is a function of our velocity, right? So with stiffness, we have displacement. Um, with a spring, we have displacement. With a damper, we have velocity. Um, so we have our force, Fc, is equal to Cx dot. Right? And so here we have a force is linearly proportional to our velocity. Um, the constant C is called the damping coefficient. And then what's the units of damping? It's a little confusing. Uh, no, because it's a it's it's a velocity. It, it it breaks down into kilograms per second. Correct. Okay. So um, all systems have have damping. Let's talk a little bit more about that. So let's say you've got a, a engine here. This is my drawing of an engine. Um, and on this engine, I have some engine blocks, right? Sorry, some engine mounts. Um, and I'm going to need some little 
some little rubber systems here for my engine mounts. So these are my pieces of rubber onto my fixities. Right? So how could we model how could we model this engine? So we have we have a rubber. So is this going to be a spring or a damper? Or what was the other option? Yeah, it's going to be both, right? So we have a stiffness and a damping in our rubber. Does that make sense? So let's go ahead and just rotate that to the side, just because it's a little easier to draw. We have our stiffness and our damping to our mass. Put our mass on some wheels. Make x positive to the right. Does that make sense? So this is how we model a one degree of freedom system. Now a stiffness and damping. Yeah. So wouldn't in this case, like the global model, have to be going downwards? Yeah, I just rotated it to the right to make it easy to draw. Yeah. What well, wouldn't gravity be directed downwards in this case? But does it, but does it change your equation of motion? Sometimes. No. Yeah. So it doesn't change your equation of motion, right? We're just worried about oscillations. So this is a perfectly fine uh, model of this. Does that make sense? That's a good question. Any other? Did I lose anyone else? Because it, it looks odd to draw engine mounts holding it up from the side. I guess I could have done that too. <laughs> okay. So now we have forces um, acting on this. So if I go ahead and if I pull my my mass to the right, right? So think about the forces now that are going to be acting on my block. So my block here, right, being displaced to the right, um, I have my force from my spring and my force from my damper, right? Technically, if I draw it like this, I have mass and gravity and normal force, um, but not to worry about that. Those cancel out, right? So we don't need to go over all of that again. But that gets us our, um, our simple model. So now the question becomes, how much damping do you need? So Anyone want to take a stab at that? Like dirt bikes, just more throttle, you know, it's the answer to all your problems. Um, you just need more power. Do you always want more damping? Mm. I mean, I think it depends on like the mission, like what is the task. Yeah, right. So it's very application specific. Um, and oftentimes it's going to be cost driven, right? So it's uh, like anything in life, when you try to get more and more and more excitations out of a system, um, it gets incredibly expensive. And that's why when you build microprocessors, right, you build them on tables that are levitating on very clean, compressed air, right? I mean, once you try to get the very, very small damping out, um, it gets very hard. But let's try to get some mathematical representations then to, to, uh, to look at that. But first, there are a couple of specific cases for damping we want to talk about, right? So we've talked about damping that looks like this, or, or we've drawn it, right? So something kind of oscillates around the system. Um, what if we apply enough damping where we don't oscillate around the system and we just come straight down, right? So there's some cases where we're going to oscillate, and there's some cases where we're going to just converge right down to our system without passing zero, right? So, and you've seen that. If you have enough damping, you can converge down. And we'll call that over damp. But let me take a step back and define a few terms here. Um, so we have underdamped, sorry, we have undamped. Um, and that oscillates around the 
around the equilibrium. And does not decay. Right, so let's draw that with orange, I guess. And that's just what we've been calling, that's what we've been doing so far. Right, so our next case is going to be we have an underdamped case. We'll do that in blue. Um, an underdamped. Oscillates around equilibrium. And slowly decays. Right, so this is what we've been talking about. Up. Pretty much at the same period, um, except my picture doesn't look like that. Um, but that's our underdamped case. And then finally, we're going to have overdamped. And so this does not pass. equilibrium and it's a simple decay simple decay with no oscillation Right, so an overdamp case would look like this. Does that make sense? So if we have no damping, we're going to be orange. As we add some damping, we're going to be blue, right? And then as we add more damping, we're going to be green. So those are our, our three cases of damping, right? No damping, which I guess is in a very good case. Um, and then our underdamped and overdamped. So those are our two real cases. So what else might be important here? What? Yeah, but like, like what is the critical damping? Like in terms of like a high level, what is critical damping? Like, like why is it important? So let, let, let's, let's take a step back before we define terms, right? So as we add damping, we want to know what is the point that we switch from oscillating about equilibrium to not oscillating about equilibrium. Does that make sense? It's on so, the phase. What? Okay, so is this like related to phase? No, so there's, there's no phase here, but, but we're, we're only worried about your oscillations around zero. So as we move from oscillating around zero to not oscillating around zero, we're going to have one value for C that's going to be that limit. Does that make sense? Our limit state. So I don't really consider it a damping case. I think it's kind of a, a special case. Um, but we'll call it critically damped. Um, oh, I did not put over damp there. Whoopsie. That's fine. So critically damped provides the quickest approach to zero amplitude.
Right, I'm going to put here in parentheses, it's the limit state. Although technically, I guess it'd be like the transition state, probably more than a limit, right? Transition boundary. Um, but let's go ahead and draw that here. And again, I don't know what it looks like, right? But maybe it looks like something like that. So it, it's less than overdamp. Um, it, it converges faster than overdamp, right? And then it's going to, it potentially converges faster than underdamp uh, because it actually steadies out. But a lot of times, if you want something to get small quickly, you might actually just want to underdamp it. But that's a controls topic. 